Yes, sir, but we won't put any shackles on it or anything. All we just right. let you come on. My name is Pat Dickerson. My wife Rosie and I live in Aiken, just west of here, and this morning a very wet west of here. And we are, uh, we're retired. We've been retired for quite a while. So we're not experts in politics. We're not experts in history. But thanks to today's communications, we do stay connected. And we watch what's going on. We watch what's going on with you folks here. And by the way, I'd like to congratulate everybody in the room, you folks there, back here. Regardless of what your leanings are, I congratulate you for being a part of our government and, and wanting your, yourself known. We live in that little town on a, almost an acre of South Carolina soil. And we get to make all the decisions on that acre. But we watch what's going on outside. So some years ago, some six years ago, we attended a meeting at a friend's house, a meeting of folks that were concerned about where our government was going. We had a man in the White House that uh, quite honestly seemed to be wild-eyed and, and talking about things that we didn't want to hear. We didn't want to see that direction. So when we were presented with the idea of a COS, it sounded real good. They were saying things that, that I knew need to happen. My wife, Rosie, even offered a prayer at that meeting for the success of that effort. Then time went along, things changed. A fellow named Donald Trump got elected. He was saying things we wanted to hear. He had been a businessman. And being a guy that voted for H. Ross Perot twice, and probably put Clinton in office, I knew that a businessman and a business brain is what we needed. So I started looking at the idea of a COS. And the reason I started looking at it is because I said, if it's really fair, and if it's really going to get input from everybody, we're not going to be the only ones talking. Our side, our values are not going to be the only ones permitted, prevented, uh, presented. We're going to have other folks. And if I look at the world today, since that time six years ago, we've got folks out there that would like to do away with the Electoral College. And all that takes is an amendment. And amendments is what the COS says we're going to talk about. I see folks out there that want to head us in a socialist direction. I see folks out there that would like to confiscate firearms. I see folks that would like to limit my ability to do what I'm doing right now. Now, they're going to be in that COS meeting, too. And they're going to have their platform. So I started getting really concerned about COS as we went along, and I watched our president create almost single-handedly because a lot of Republicans were not in his camp either, and, of course, the Democrats weren't. But I got to looking at what he was doing. He was changing what I think is the real problem. The problem is not the Constitution. It's not broken. Yeah, we got a few amendments we need to straighten out, and I'll talk about those in just a second. But what we've got is a voter base that really is getting the wrong story out of the media, or they don't care. Kind of like a friend of mine said the other day, I don't do politics. I don't care about politics. I said, my friend, politics cares about you. And they're going to come get you if you don't provide the input that your people that you've elected and put in office, if they don't know what you're thinking, then your values are not going to get represented. And you know what? As I thought about the COS and I started thinking about the freedom of speech in this country, I watched what the COS faction was doing. I was being called everything from delusional to crazy. I was even a lackey for George Soros and Hillary Clinton. 
at one point. So I, I watched the culture change. I watched President Trump and his successes. I watched him do the kinds of things that I knew needed to be done. And I think any person that sits down and thinks about it knows that those things need to be done in terms of economics, in terms of everything. And I'm not going to go through that whole list because Donald does that real well, doesn't he? So I come down to the, to the point where I say, I don't like what's happening with the COS movement. And if that's the way we're going to run a convention of states, should it happen to, ha to, to come about, I'm not sure I want to be a part of that. So I got down and said, Rosie, we need to talk about this thing. She said, does it involve Donald Trump? I said, of course it does. She said, he's my man, you know that. Since the escalator, he's been my man. And I said, you know what? If anybody that I know of in politics today can change the culture, the voters, the government, you guys, can change the direction that we're headed, that man can do it. We don't need the distraction of his agenda that called a COS, because you know that distraction is going to be there. So let's get behind Donald Trump and support him, and let's, let's, let's do things like take out the 17th Amendment. Make, make that go away. If that goes away, you know what? We got a convention of states full time right there in the Senate, like the Founding Fathers wanted. We don't need to go through all of the processes and all the risk that are involved in a convention of states. It's not an accident to me that the 16th and the 17th Amendment were ratified within a few months of each other. Guess what? If I'm going to win over a combined Senate, I've got to be talking about the people because those people in the state legislatures, no, they're experienced politicians. They're experienced government people. And they're going to be hard to convince. But if I can have the voters put those senators in place, I can convince the voters now with the promise of benefit from tax coffers. So I need to put an income tax in place. And that's the 16th. Within just a few months of each other, the 16th and 17th were both ratified. That's not an accident. So my objectives and my, my position, I guess, boils right down to two. First of all, I believe this legislature should not sign this petition for the Convention of States. The organization and efforts of the COS movement should be restricted, excuse me, redirected towards appealing, repealing the 17th and subnote fair tax in the 16th, but we won't talk about that today. I believe term limits should not be implemented, and that's one of the three main objectives of the COS. It's kind of strange to me that 17th repeal is not one of those objectives, not one of those top three, and yet the claim is that the COS movement wants to limit the government, the federal government. <coughs> Term limits is also one of the worst personnel practices I can imagine. Who is going to go through the hoops that you've got to go through in order to win an office in this country today, knowing that that office is going to disappear for you in a set amount of time, regardless of how well you do it? What kind of quality candidate are we going to get in that kind of environment? And what's that person going to be thinking about should that person get the office while they're doing it? They're going to be thinking about their next job, not thinking about how well they do it because it makes no difference how well they do it. So term limits denies people across the country in having full choice for the people to represent them in Washington. Think about that. 
I don't have the right to tell people in California, even though I think there's some people coming from California to our Congress that really ought not be there. <laughs> I don't have the right to tell them they can't vote for them. You say, well, they're not qualified. That don't make any difference. As long as it's legal, the people in California get to make that rule, not us. I certainly don't want anybody telling me I can't vote for Tim Scott. And that's a two-way street that would happen with term limits. So I thank you again, everyone in this room, for your involvement in keeping the United States the way it is, and South Carolina the way it is, and moving forward from here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Dix. Next speaker.